Check, mic, one, two, one, two. All right, my friends, here we are back again. I'm the Zim, and this is the Zim Video. This is what we call the Art Professors Podcast. It's available on YouTube, but also on all the podcast places. So, hey, hopefully you're listening to it somewhere. Um, cool beans. Let's get into it. We have a few things to go over today. This may or may not be my last uh, episode until... Um, my new job starts, wherever that might be, and we'll talk more about that. But there also may be a reason if I get more interviews and different things like that, there may be reasons to talk to you about the process of working up to my next job. So I might sprinkle one in here and there. I know I only have a month left of this space behind me. I have basically two weeks until my kids get here. I plan to take it all apart before my kids get here because I want them to have I have a daughter and a son and I want them to be able to sleep comfortably. So we'll figure out where they want to sleep. I sleep out in what would normally be the living room, as you probably already know, because that's what I do. Um, And then I use the bedroom as a studio space, but I won't really be needing it now because transition and start moving transition is starting. So making work, I plan to make some work next week. My plan for next week is to go scroll back to my earliest portraits. I did a bunch of TikTok personalities a long time, a couple of, you know, was it three, four years ago now? Three years ago, I guess. And I want to redo their portraits in the style that I'm doing now because it's definitely evolved from then. And um, yeah, just to, because I I would look back at some of them like, man, this is trash. (laughs) And I've grown so much as an artist. So I'd like to redo them and see what they look like um now so that's the plan for next week i want to do 10 i want to do my first 10 portraits i've done um outside of i'm not going to do the chadwick bozeman one again that was the very first one and then after that i started doing portraits again so i plan to do the 10 following the chasmic bozeman one so whatever that those were i'll have to look back i'm pretty sure they're all documented on my tiktok account so i'll be able to like see them there so that's the plan all right so june we're in june it's june 6th i'm published uh recording and publishing this a day early than normal because i'm a not really doing anything and i'm just super excited to talk to you and i don't i don't think much will happen in the next 24 hours so um we got a lot everything that we'll talk about today is what i'm excited about so we'll talk about it let me go down a bullet point list i'll give you a little bit more about the state of zim right now We'll talk about the, I had an actual interview at uh, Rochester Institute of Technology. We'll talk about that and what that experience was like. Um, And then other, talk about the application and interview process. We'll talk about the videos I've put out that are related to my exhibition. We'll talk a little bit about the exhibition, but I already did a comprehensive review of the exhibition, but there's some corrections and things to add of the 7269 exhibition. And then I did the Tennessee culture review video that you could check out as well those of you that are watching on youtube i'll put the little tags up in when i mention them so you can pop over to them then we're going to talk about this uh, new social app for visual you know mediums uh called cara i think is how you pronounce it c-a-r-a talk about that that's at the i got at the end so let's get into it first thing i wanted to share with you is I got a new mug and I told you about this. If you watch the, um, or listen to the tennis, the, the art exhibition one, I bought this at Tennessee state university in their campus bookstore. And I really love it. It's a great mug. It'll be one of my new stream mugs, one of my new, you know, mugs that I'll be drinking from while I'm talking to you all. And I think mugs are the thing that I'll be collecting as I travel around the country, hopefully, um, yeah as the places i work at and the exhibitions i get and significant things i'll i'll buy a mug uh, to represent that kind of souvenir aspect of of the moment so i already i got one two three four five now i think five mugs in my collection from san diego to tennis to missouri to tennessee yeah so maybe we'll do a mug review someday i'll share all my mugs all right overall the general feeling i'm at like i just want to give you an update on how like my state of mind in a sense and i keep i watch this show 
uh, on Apple TV or whatever it's called, Apple Plus or whatever. It's called, uh, what is it called? Dark Matter. And it kind of got me thinking about uh, how I am, like what is in store for me and projecting, like thinking about that pathway of life. And I think I might have mentioned this before because it's a, not an, I don't think it's a new concept. But, and for me, it feels as though because I'm planning this traveling way of life right now, like going somewhere new every year, it's really hard to see beyond like all I can see, like all I can, per like sometimes you think maybe, maybe you have a job, like you're in a position where you know you're going to be there for a while, whether maybe you're married, maybe you're in school just starting maybe you're just in a place where you just know you're not going to be moving anytime soon so you project you can look into the future maybe you can i don't know how you work but i feel like when i was in positions that i was more sort of i guess you could say rooted in that area i could look i would project and think about the future and could see pathways where now in my life what's going on all i can see is like when my kids get here, I'm going to drive to the Northwest in July and then August. It's like, there's nothing, there's nothing. I have no, it's like, what am I going to be doing? I have no idea. There's no, I mean, it's, it's almost like it's in, it's, it's, it's so infinite that it's feels like there's nothing because it's like the space is, is open for any possibility, any possibility. So we'll see what happens. I mean, I think I would want to, I want a job. I want to work at another university. That's the most, as far as I can tell, if I have any control over my life, it's the prospect of going to another area, getting a full-time job at a university, teaching for a year, just absorbing that culture, that style, that life, that education of, for me, you know, getting better as an art professor, doing that kind of thing. That's, that's what I think I want. You know, I'm such in a place, it's hard to like, I've always been hard with absolutes. It's always been a hard thing for me to say, this is it. And I, it's even, it's both gotten easier and worse. There are certain parts of my life where I am willing to make an absolute. Like I'm, yeah, I don't know. I was about to say something that I don't think I'm ready to say yet. But um, so it's, it's just an interesting journey. So where we're at right now with the whole job search idea is I'm going to stay right here. Like I just did. I just told you what my, what I want for my life is to go to a new school. I want to go to a new area and a new school. That's my goal. And honestly, I'm like 90% confident about that. There's still like 10% of, ah, what about this, that, and so there's a little bit, but I'm also trying to live hard in this kind of concept and maybe you've heard this idea. Well, I heard it somewhere. I forget who told, said it, but the idea of there's no, 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 no regrets is one thing, but also no forks in your road in a sense. Like there's no, the choice you make is the choice you make and that's the perfect choice. Pondering on all the different choices you could have made and like the forks in your road is like I do not want to think that way. I just want to be like, this is the perfect choice because this is what we're doing and go. And so I don't want to spend a lot of time on the what ifs. I just want to be like, this is what I'm choosing. Go and go like, well, what if I did that? What if I and not trying to live in that space? So not to bury the lead here, because I think this is the most significant part. Or well, for me, this is the most significant part of the podcast is I actually got an interview uh, they, it was from all right, Rochester Institute of Technology. <clears throat> I got an interview. Let's, uh, I didn't put the dates. I could probably look up the date of when I sent the first initial. No, no. Well, maybe, I don't know. It'd be, it'd be kind of cumbersome to find the, the date on which I applied. Oh no, I did. I have it here. The date I applied April 24th was the date I applied to Rochester Institute of Technology. And I got an email from them. So April, so about a month after I applied, I would say they emailed me because I was already back. 
no, the day, yeah, I know this specifically because the day I was leaving, the moment I was go, walking to my car, leaving the exhibition in, from Tennessee, from the Hiram Van Gordon Gallery, walking to my car, I was like sitting in my car, I pulled up my phone, I looked at my phone, pulled up my emails, scrolling down, saw an email from RIT, RIT, that they want to interview me. And I popped out because the gallery curator was walking across the street as well, like into the parking lot as well. And I was like, hey, I just got an email for an interview. I was like stoked on it. So so when then we scheduled the interview for, so that was, that was Friday. We scheduled the interview, that was last Friday. So it would have been May 31st. So the day I got the email was actually May 30th. It was the Thursday because I remember going back the next day and the gallery curator and I talked about the position. So everything I said about Friday is incorrect. And then we scheduled the interview for June 3rd or 4th, two days ago, Wednesday, it was Tuesday. So yeah, June 4th at, and it was 1 p.m. in my time, we had it. So I was, you know, I really didn't get too nervous for it. I got a little nervous. My heart started right before I go. I go on these weird little cycles. The closer it gets, the less nervous I get. There's like this, and I've probably talked. I've talked. I've definitely talked about this before in some place. When, like the day before or the two days before, I'll have this peak of nervous energy where I'm like, "Oh my god!" But then the closer it gets to it, I just find ways to calm myself down. Maybe it'll like it'll like go up again a little, but it doesn't get as high as it was, like. 24 48 hours before because i remember right before the interview my heart started to beat a little bit more um, i was definitely nervous during the interview and in a sense of my body was nervous but my mind was calm because i was holding my coffee or my teacup and i was shaking and i was wondering if they could see or if the shaking of the teacup looked like nervous shaking or if it just looked like anything different because I was, you know, they were, we were on Zoom and like you're watching the YouTube video right now. They were watching me just like this. It's just basically the same setup. And I took a few sips, but I noticed I was shaking. So after that, every time I grabbed my teacup, I would grab it with two hands and take a sip from it. Um, but I do definitely feel like I represented, I 100% represented myself at, as good as I could have, you know, Again, going back to what I've just was rambling on about infinite possibilities, right? The conversation could have gone a lot of different ways. I could have said a lot of different things. Um, the way it was set up, there were, I'll leave names out of it for now, but the way there were f four, was it four? Yeah, four people, four or five? One, two, three. I think it was just four, yeah four people and then me so there's five total on the zoom call um two illustrators and that's the position that i'm applying for which is illustration and we'll talk there's something specific to mention about that there was like the head of the arts and there's from what it sounds like there's multiple kind of schools of art there's like the a, more of a fine art school there's the an illustration department in a way or something that that's attached to like another school that the illustration department has you and then like the graphic design is actually in a whole different school like a design school which tells me a lot i think about their approach to graphic design they definitely client-based it's not at all make graphic design to be artists it's client-based work that's what it feels like or at least really heavy that direction which is Honestly, you've heard me say before, disappointing, but, um, but it means like if I would, I probably won't get the opportunity to teach like a packaging design class. Cause I did see on their like website and their information about the school that they had, they, they call it, they don't call it packaging design. They called it like something else that made it feel more clinical and technical versus artistic. So anyways, interesting thing. So I'm interviewing for this illustration position they i felt very comfortable i calmed down quickly i you know tapped into this is the 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 value of being a podcaster for so long i mean hands down anybody out there that's 
wants to do anything remotely, any job I could suppose, but start a podcast and start being curious and ask people questions. And then, so whenever you go to an interview, just think of it as a mini podcast. And it made me so much calmer, you know? And then I have my other tricks of being a performer. And then they picked up on the fact that I'm a, I'm this, I'm this kind of vivacious, somewhat boisterous, somewhat energetic kind of personality. They definitely picked up on it because one of them mentioned it. She was like, I like that you're, I forget, she, I think she might have said boisterous or something, but I like that you're energetic is basically what she said. Um, so, and I was like, yeah, hey, that's me. You got, so they, they got a very, very accurate representation of me. And I know, like, I know, cause I've experienced it on the other side where somebody interviews, they come in and then they're like a completely different person than what, who they were when they were interviewing. It's like, you were just hiding all this. And that's not me. I'm, I'm, I am like very, very transparent about who I am and what I stand for. Cause I want, I don't, I don't want to fake who have to fake who I am, especially in these environments, especially with art. If they value perspective, if they value someone that's going to engage with the students and really be there for them, and if they value somebody that's going to be part of the community, if that's a value, then I'm number one choice, no question. If all they value or if the emphasis of their value is we need somebody that understands the title of this class to the T and has taught it many, many times, then I may not be the right person for them. If all they can see is, I don't even know, cause I don't even know, this is the gray area for this position. And I know I could, I could teach anything, especially two dimensional, anything two dimensional I can teach. Just give me a week or two to like, look over old lesson plans and old things. And I'll be like, all right, I'm there. But I know like this particular position, I know I'm not an illustrator. I know I'm not a professional illustrator that gets, you know, client based work and illustration. But I do also know my work has illustrative tendencies at times, although I've never specifically talked about it in that lens or that viewpoint, I could easily jump from what I do, especially with the drawing and the graphic design backgrounds that I have now. And because it's to me, illustration is drawing and graphic design it's like a middle point between the two uh, with an emphasis on storytelling and i've been saying before that i've learned like for me graphic design is an emphasis on message making which is a different thing like you're you're still kind of story but the message is like client you know it's like you're trying to convey a message of the brand or something like that which isn't necessarily like storytelling like so you can tell a story without it needing to be branded, right? You can tell, like, look at, I don't know, Norman Rockwell, like his drawings are all illustrative and they tell a story in it. And it's just about life and it's about people and it's about ideas. But graphic design is probably closer to this idea of branding, of message making, of like you understand the ethos of an idea with all the elements that go into it. So it's, it's different message making, which you know, Venn diagram, obviously the circles overlap and those kind of things. So I feel 100% confident that I would be able to figure out whatever they need me to do. It's just a matter of, do they feel confident I would be able to do that? I don't know if I presented that well enough. I hope I did, but I definitely presented myself well enough to know what you see is what you get. And you're, you're getting someone that's authentic, someone that's, um, a deep thinker, someone that's, you know, cares about students, someone that cares about environment, someone that cares about culture, someone that cares about community. You know, I really think I, I got sprinkled it enough, but I also feel like they only got about 10%. <laughs> they only got about 10% of like who I am basically, both as an artist, as a person, they were, there was just so many things that I, we could have mined more and gone on with more. Two of the questions that came up that I'm going to learn about how to answer better, because I don't think I, I answered them fine, but I think there's definitely ways to answer them better. The one, the first one that came up was, I think the question was, what do you provide to like a BFA program here? Kind of. And the way I answered it was, 
well, with my background in graphic design and my background in drawing and illust basically I just said what I just told you, like it's illustration is like a middle point. I can bring in some different ideas. I think I in the, so another thing that happened throughout is I'm a talker, as you all know, I, you know, one, a question branches off for me. It's like, there's no, it's not a singular, it's not a binary. Any one question has a ver so many answers in terms of what it taps into. And I think I definitely, when I answered questions, it definitely showed that I'm thinking about a bigger picture of it. And my questions were not short. They were, I mean, my answers were not short. They were full of thoughts and ideas. And so I would tend to do the thing that happens like I've experienced many times on podcasts where a, a, a guest is basically answering all the rest of the questions before they ask them because it, I understand how it all plays together in a way and it's just the nature of things. And it happened a few times during the conversation. But that was the one, that was one. So how I would have answered it, I would have, and I would, next time if that question comes up again, I would answer it more from a human level versus a technique or like a um, subject level. I would answer it from, you know, I'm compassionate about people. I, you know, I would answer, I would answer it for the level of that. And I bring a lot of different, a diversity to a, a program, um, and experience and thoughts and ideas. And then the other question that I would figure, I don't know what, why they ask, I don't know why they ask it because I've been around it before, but I, I've, I don't think I've specifically been asked it, but the idea, the other question that's interesting to think about in terms of what is the answer they're looking for is using technology while teaching. Like what is my relationship with teaching using technology and for me it's easy to answer because i've taught so much graphic design it's like a you have to know the adobe creative cloud to do that so technology is like part of the of teaching so there's that aspect but i don't know if that's what they want to know and then there's also the question of how comfortable am i with like the the class portal like nowadays every school and every class has an online component where it's like a portal that you communicate with your students it northwest missouri it was canvas i had a small brief time in blackboard um they use a different program which i forget what it's called i don't i don't remember what it's called um i should have wrote it down so i could look it up but so Maybe they're asking about that. Maybe that's part of it, but they also asked another question about that. So maybe they don't think that, or maybe, I mean, I, what I told them is I, I'm comfortable in the programs. I use it as part of the class. I'm comfortable in the Adobe creative cloud. And I'm also like when students maybe can't make it to class or need to need a little help. And if it makes sense, I'll record videos, tutorials and do that. So it's like, I, there's that part of technology that I use, but if they're asking about do i use teaching tools in a sense like there's a lot of different apps and stuff now that basically are like test taking apps and just different things that you can plug into your class i don't really i don't use any of those so and i don't really want to to be honest but i don't know if that's what they're looking for so who knows um and because i haven't found any that really makes sense for the teaching what I, how I teach and what I want to teach. And maybe eventually there'll be more ways to include some kind of online, cause I don't do tests in my class. So the need of this kind of like test your knowledge, it's like, I want practical. I want you in class doing the thing versus just remembering the thing, you know? So I teach more practically. And this, that's something I didn't say in the whole conversation that I would have liked to add in. Uh, I'm going to write it down in my notes, just teaching practically. See if I remember what it means. I can always listen back to this podcast. So teaching more like experiential and practically versus memorization. And just, do you remember what I said yesterday? It's like, just come in and show me. Don't, don't write, don't check a box. Don't do a thing. Just come in, show me that you remember what design principles are. Show me that you are, have a presentation that's like, talk about to the class, what you learned yesterday or what you study, what you research, talk, tell, tell the class, be experiential with it, be 
in it be part of it versus just a memorization kind of technique so those are the two questions i don't know I'll, as i go maybe i'll ask what they are what is the what is the hope for the answer for both those questions but definitely the using technology one really is like I don't, what do they mean by that <laughs> i don't know what they because it because because there's another side of it that because i know there are definitely art professors out there that are older or whatever there's definitely professors there's definitely people just people in general out there that are still not caught up to 2024 and what is offered with technology and i think i'm pretty darn caught up i don't i won't maybe yeah i'm pretty darn caught up i don't do everything that's available but i'm i do you know obviously i'm making podcasts i'm live streaming i'm you know i know how to use a phone i know how to use a computer i know all the adobe creative cloud software i'm you know i, I know this stuff so anything about the interview so yeah it was i was i felt pretty good i felt pretty calm um i liked it and i think this is more what i expect i think i mean again still learning about this process in terms of visiting faculty positions and those kind of things but i think this makes more sense to what the expectation of the interview process would look like for one year visiting faculty is it's you, you they decide over zoom they don't or whatever if you're if you happen to be local you can go in i suppose but for people like me that aren't going to be local to any of these places i'm applying to it's like the zoom maybe a follow-up but it's like they just decide off of basically one interview because that's what it sounded like at the toward the end of the interview she, the you know they said um we're trying to do this fast you know so they said three weeks basically and i don't know if that three weeks included the week of interviews plus two weeks to decide by the end of three weeks they or if it was the interview and then three weeks after i hope that's not the case that seems like a really long time so i'm hoping it's the interview and then up to three weeks up like the whole process would be a three-week cycle if it takes that long and honestly i'm hoping that i I mean, I crushed it. There's no question I crushed it. It's just whether or not they, that piece I was talking about, like the piece of what do they value more? Do they value someone that's gonna come in and be just amazing person, a part of the community? And they could guarantee, I could guarantee that to them and they saw that? Or are they wanting someone that has years of illustration experience specifically and will sacrifice some of the, personality to co i mean not to say that there couldn't be somebody well there's not gonna nah, how kind of phrases there could be somebody out there that's just as good as me in terms of the personality that's also has more experience illustrating that's totally a possibility but i don't know i i'm a rare i'm a rare bird i know that i know that <laughs> um so we'll see what they want and if they offer me the position and if uh, you know nothing else is on the table right now really for all intents and purposes but we'll talk more about that in a second uh, i would definitely highly consider it i would want to talk to them about the contract a little bit and see what the reality is with the contract but it would it would be a you know in the 90 percentile of accepting if they offered me the position so i'll keep you posted I did get, so in the span of time as well, so the last podcast I did was a month ago, basically. And in that span of time, I did apply to two other places. I applied to this school called Lebanon Valley College in Pennsylvania, An Anvil, Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh. It's for a design, a graphic design position. And they actually emailed back fairly shortly after, so I applied to them on the 29th of May, which was really close to the end of my time in Tennessee. And then a couple days later, they emailed back and said, you seem to have the qualifications that they would actually offer me a longer position, like a three-year term kind of position. And I'm like, I'll, I emailed back. I was like, I'm not, just to be honest, I'm not interested in three years. I, I'll do the one year for sure. And that's all I said that's what I want. And I told him why, you know, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm going to try to use teaching as an opportunity to, you know, gain exposure to new ideas and, and have that feed into my art practice. 
um, and just, you know, just expose myself, learn things, be, do the thing. So they didn't email back, but the person that emailed me said they were going on vacation and they would schedule with me at the end of June for an interview. So we'll see if I get an interview there. I'll keep you posted on that one. And then I just today, like at four in the morning, cause it, they posted, I saw the post yesterday. They posted it on the fifth. And I was sitting at my desk, computer. I was like kind of tired. I didn't really want to deal with it. So I was like, I'll do it tomorrow. I, and, but I kind of woke up super early and I couldn't, I was just like, whatever. So I went and it was the University of Pittsburgh, which was, seems like a awesome place. And it's a drawing position, visiting faculty. And I applied to them today, actually early this morning. So we'll see if anything manifests from that one, because I feel like most of the, I feel like this is my, thought i feel like we're in the span of time that i will get consideration more higher consideration sooner because of just the the set of factors like the amount of my resume like what i what i offer and i think i'm pretty i think i have i offer a lot and i think i show that with my resume and cv all the things that i send in and time is now a factor like they want to fill these positions as fast as possible because the next school we're in the summer where they don't want to be you know a lot of people are off for the summer they don't want to be thinking about it so i'm hoping that these positions they'll see my resume kind of like what happened when i got at northwest missouri is like basically i feel like i was the first one on the on the thing and they were like this guy seems pretty good <laughs> let's bring him in so i'm hoping that same kind of effect will happen as we go and I'll get offers, if not hired quickly within the next, fingers crossed by the end of June, so I know what's going on so I can plan because I'm gonna be in the Northwest in July and then basically at the end of July, driving to wherever I'm gonna be living. And I'd really like to know that. That's That would be awesome, that'd be awesome. So that's basically the culmination. So as of today, we've applied to 32 colleges on my sheet here which could be inaccurate, but for the most part, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 of them have told me that I remember and caught the emails that they filled the position. So we're down, basically we're, we have 20 left or so. Um, but I think there's a couple more in here that have filled the position. I just don't, yeah, definitely. I feel, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like a lot more of them have been filled. So yeah, that's where we're at. That's what's up with that. All right, moving on. So we did the uh, 7269 video recap of the exhibition and I'm gonna use, so hopefully you check that out. Uh, probably already tagged it in the video for you to go watch, but it's in the description. I'll tag up the link to the description. So those of you that are listening on another platform can click the link. It'll take you to I did put it, I did this video, the 7269 recap video, I published as an audio only version. So the episode before this one on the audio only platforms that you're listening to, you can find that one. So go check that out also on the YouTube channel. Um, so really what else do I have to say? I'm sure there's tons more that I could say. The thing that I think, one of the main things I think maybe didn't come across as as good as it should have on that video is I'm profoundly proud of myself for doing it. Like I feel a, a, a sense of accomplishment. I definitely feel that sense of accomplishment. I love it. Talking about, you know, applying to the University of Pittsburgh. First time I got to put a new body of work on my portfolio for the ex, uh, you know, for the, application which i think looks great it's like the first thing i have now on my you open up my portfolio you see 7269 exhibition and the photos i use to share that and then right next to that is the katanji brown jackson exhibition so it's like there's this meat to the portfolio that i really like so hopefully it perks some interest and in eyes and they're like this now this is interesting i haven't seen this before what are these because i always put a i put a picture of the before and after because of the nature of the time-based nature of the exhibition so I'm profoundly proud of myself for doing it. I'm, yeah, it's, let's just keep it rolling. But I think the emphasis of the, you know, I really feel like the emphasis of the 
7269 video the takeaway from that video if anybody watches it or that podcast if anybody listens to it is we got to keep working we didn't achieve the ultimate goal yet we're not i mean it'll be a long time before we achieve the ultimate goal but we are still we didn't make enough progress toward the goal of sustainability more people knowing about it um just a lot of fact ex all the the external factors of success were basically non-existent it was all personal worth and that's not quite it's not going to cut it <laughs> it's, unfortunately that's not going to cut it in the long term it's not going to be sustainable if it's all just about i'm now i've done one more piece of art you know it's got to get out there it's got to get out there and there's got to be people out there that can support it because i don't know what to do i don't know what to do cold calling um cold calling places to share work and do that is always a crapshoot most of the time they're like we don't know who you are so we're not even going to open the email versus oh you're an established artist or oh somebody we know that's established recommended you and they reach out to me or something that's that's what I hope will happen eventually is somehow someone else will champion me to help me get into more spaces, which I think might be maybe this maybe that movement is there because there were, you know, Justin Jones and other influential people in their own right. Maybe they'll invite me to do something to share the work again to do another exhibition to I don't know maybe there's something there for me to that will manifest I just can't see it yet talking about earlier what you know I have no idea what's going to happen past August there's I can't even see it <laughs> it's like a black void of you know infinite possibilities so many possibilities it's dense and becomes black you know um so couple corrections though on that video nothing serious in a sense the there's only I don't know two Three, well, three was the proud of myself. So two more. The budget part of it, I miscalculated. It's actually higher. <laughs> it's actually about $400, $450 more because I didn't put the paper cost on it. So that was, and then the ink cost. So the supplies, I didn't complete the supplies. So it's about four, I'll just say $400. It cost me $400 more than what the budget was noted. So that's a correction. The other correction, or not really a correction, but something I just didn't talk about that I probably should have or could have or would have been worth mentioning is the relationship. So Justin Jones had a direct relationship with the exhibition, which was great. Justin Pearson, however, didn't have, I didn't know or what, I don't know what, if there was any, I know there was one minor acknowledgement of the existence of the exhibition because he commented on an Instagram post, I think, something like, this is cool. And then I, re or something of that nature, it was just an acknowledgement that the exhibition is happening. And then I commented on his comment saying, you know, he. I remember specifically him commenting before his drawing started. So I said, if you want to come down and check it out, I would recommend waiting till this day because I haven't started on your drawings yet. Um, but he didn't come down. And I think this is my theory on why he didn't come down. Well, two reasons. He's based in Memphis, which is a decent drive from Nashville. Um, I don't know what it is, but it's got to be a couple hours at least, two to three hours or four or more. Should we look it up? Let's look it up. Might as well, right? Uh, maps let's see what google maps says three hours so yeah so it's a decent and that's three hours so maybe four hours uh three to three it says three hours 15 minutes right now so i mean that's a good drive so if he's in memphis it's like that's you have to be committed to make that drive just on a whim and not really knowing what's going on and so that's a factor that played against it probably um and then also I don't think there was anybody in his ear that said, you really should check this out. You really should make that three hour drive to check this out because it'd be worth it. It's like, this is a, this is a moment. This is, this is a significant thing that's happening, which I'm willing to say that because everyone else said that. <laughs> everyone else that was Justin Jones, 
his circle of elders, other people were, I got a really good sense that people thought it was something worth it's worth it. I'll just put it like that. I don't, it was worth it. So, and I don't think anybody in his specific circle of influence said it was in his ear saying, or sharing the, sharing it with him and saying, this is pretty amazing. It would be really cool if you could make it over. And maybe he did, maybe that happened. And he was like, oh, I just can't. Cause I know the weekend. So I was making his work the, no, the week. So the, the weekend of the closing was a Thursday night the weekend or the week the day of the closing was a thursday night may 30th i know on his social media he was advertising that coming up weekend he had a big a fundraiser for his campaign so that was pretty so that kind of blocked out possibly a lot of time around the closing so he would have had to come like maybe the weekend before and when did i start his drawings i don't remember specifically it was 13 days totals we ended the drawings on the saturday so yeah, he would have had to come that week before some time to to really get the visual impact of it. And who knows if he could have or would have or like his schedule and all those things. So definitely a little disappointed because it would have been really cool to meet both of them and have them come on their own initiative in that way. But it was, but because Justin Jones came down and I met him and got to know him, it really made it special like that was and that's what i talked about on the, the the recap video was meeting him and the interaction discourse that was created from him being there and talking and that was it was everything that moment was everything about the act like that's why i did it to have that to learn and grow from the experience and have the discourse and I'm so thankful for that moment. Like if that moment didn't happen, it would have, I don't know, it would have been different. If just, if neither one of, if Justin Jones never showed, couldn't have come or did, wasn't in town, like something was different about it, then it would have changed the, my personal experience of the exhibition dramatically. But because he was there, the discourse that happened around it, the interesting things, the just the chain of events, the butterfly effect of all that that happened because of him showing up really made the exhibition in a, in a big sense. All right. So I also dropped another video, which I mentioned, which is the culture of Tennessee video. So I recommend checking it out if you haven't yet. That's only a video. So you'll have to come over to the YouTube if you're not on YouTube listening to this. Um, it was, uh, yeah, I think it's a fun little video. I talked about the places I ate. It's great. So check it out. Let me know if you have any questions about it. And lastly, I'll mention, so I'm on a new, has anybody heard of Cara, the social new social media app designed for photos and, and artists in a way and imagery? I signed up for it or like I started, I don't know, I started posting on it the beginning of this week. And as far as I can tell, it's not that great only because there's zero organic reach on it. Like I've posted a bunch of photos of, or pictures about my exhibition, posted some images of older work I've done and zero interaction whatsoever. I'm also not like, I'm personally not trying to, I don't know, scroll it and do that. I'm just using it as a one way. Like, can we gain more audience from this platform? And as of yet, that's not a reality of it. And maybe they've designed it so you have to interact with other people before people will interact with you, which could be a thing. But man, <sighs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. But as far as I can tell right now, there's zero organic reach. I'm also not trying to bring an audience. Like I really, for all intents and purposes as well, there's not really, I don't really have a large audience that would even come over to it because I don't have big enough platforms on my other social platforms. And if it's like Twitch, which is 100%, you have to bring the audience. Twitch has zero organic like reach on it. You have to bring the audience from other platforms. If it's like that, then it's not really useful. But if, if they do have some kind of algorithm where they'll start sharing work that people post on it to the users on it, because I bet the user base is still pretty low. They're trying to, uh, you know, 
I don't know, um, be competition in a sense for Instagram. And if it's, I don't know, I haven't done a lot of research on it. I just saw it and I now see people kind of talking about it a little bit more on YouTube and other places. And I'm going to cut this video as well and post it as a separate little nugget about Cara. But yeah, um, I don't see, it's not very valuable yet. There's no organic reach on it. So if anybody else is having any other experience with it, please let me know in the comments. But it's a, yeah, we'll just keep posting. I'll post something on it every day. Just some work that I'm doing and see if eventually somebody will engage with my work. Because the, the thing with my work is it's fine art. It's real art. It's not just pictures. It's not just verisimilitude. Is that the word? Ver it's not realism. It's not that attempt at verisimilitude. It's like we're engaging with culture. And unfortunately, 99.9% .9 of art on social media is doesn't have substance. Um, it's just the truth. And it's and it, it makes me interested to see and think about I mean, every I'm sure this is effect of every art movement. But the amount of mass eyes that have can be put on a comic book character or a not to say that comics can't have themes in them but the art making process of it isn't pushing fine art forward it's um you know that kind of idea is not uh it's it's interesting to see what will happen with culture and art because you know because capitalism you know where the eyes are where the attention is that's what people will promote and want and so if we're just all getting, if, if it's just art, that's pretty pictures and not, it doesn't have substance. It's like, that's a shame. That's a bummer for arts as a whole. And it's, yeah. Anyways, there we are. That's my thoughts. Did I say that word right? Verisimilitude? Let's see. I'm going to look it up real quick. Yeah, that's the one. Verisimilitude. Big word. That's a new one. That's the first time I've ever used it in a, in a, conversation I, I watched another artist that i follow um what's his name elliot earls i actually inter, sort of interviewed him sort of uh talked to i talked to him in person back when i was at san diego state because i in, we invited him to be a part of a uh design conference and i got to talk to him as a you know just talk to him and but he also does sort of what i'm doing in a very different way much more academic focus than I do. I'm much, I feel like I have a, a more of a yo <laughs> kind of way of the way I do things versus he's more academic and stuff. And he posted a video recently on the same sort of topic of social media. He, his topic was learning to draw from YouTube is like the worst thing you can do because of that verisimilitude kind of approach where it's all about representation in a real real i've always used the term like realism versus verisimilitude but in that realistic kind of way that's just like what are you doing this is boring it's just basically boring it's like let's branch out from here and there's obviously there's arguments that people well let me learn this and then i could do that but it's like i don't know i don't think you need to learn that to be you can you could jump over verisimilitude into having making work that's interesting because <laughs> the verisimilitude aspect the realism aspect is like boring it's not interesting all right my friends we did it another podcast thanks for joining us today as always be loving kind and patient and i'll keep you posted i'll let you know at this point going forward no guarantee i won't be doing weekly podcasts but i'll drop a podcast as interesting information comes up and then we'll get back onto the weekly podcast when I get a new job in August, probably. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Keep me keep it posted. All right. As always, be loving, kind of patient. Peace, my friends. Mm -hmm.